from the wayside Call me your own You're me a lifeline You carry me home Jesus, you're all I want You're all I want Over the horizon Is where I look beyond You're the silver lining Breaking through the storm Jesus, you're all I want You're all I want That's the way Lost in a violent sea, drifting away to your rescue. Set my feet on solid ground. When I lost my grip. Psalm 19 begins, the heavens are declaring the glory of the Lord. And it ends with those famous words that we say so often in worship, O Lord, may the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our God, our rock and our redeemer. I've reflected on those words of the Psalm often as I prepare for us to come to worship this morning. As the changing of light this fall makes looking up to the heavens and toward the trees, absolutely stunning and beautiful, a reminder of God's provision and grace through creation, even amidst these troubled times. I encourage you this morning, this afternoon, or whenever you are watching this message, uh, to after worship in response to worship, to go outside and just to notice how the heavens and how creation is declaring God's majesty and so to reflect that in your own life of worship. My name is Will McLean and I serve as pastor of the gathering and I want to especially welcome you if you are watching our YouTube worship for the first time. You'll see a button at the bottom of your screen from which you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep in touch with all of the things that are happening in our community. Today's an exciting day for our church 
It's an exciting day because we wrap up our sermon series on digging deep and what it means to reclaim the Christian practices that might sustain us in these days. And it's also an exciting time because we have an announcement about our incoming new senior minister. Uh, Ms. Kelly Sizemore, the head of our staff parish relations committee, will share that later in our worship service. But as we prepare our hearts uh, to worship God, friends, I invite you to center yourself as we cling and claim the living hope we have in Jesus Christ. between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ you're my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy I could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to bear my sin.
Good morning. I'm Kelly Sizemore and I'm the chair of the Staff Paris Relations Committee. I'm thrilled to be here to provide you an update on our senior pastor appointment. On behalf of the SPRC committee, I want to share that Bishop Hope Morgan Ward has appointed Reverend Greg Moore to serve as our senior pastor beginning January 1st, 2021. Greg grew up in Orangeburg, South Carolina. He received his bachelor's from Charleston Southern University and a Master of Divinity from Duke Divinity School. Over the years, Greg has served at a number of churches, including as the founding senior pastor for All Saints United Methodist Church in the Briar Creek area. Most recently, Greg is serving as the executive director for New Faith Communities for the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. Greg and his wife, Molly, have four children, ages two and a half to 11. I know they're excited about joining the life and ministries of our church and that you all will welcome them with open arms. Some of you may recognize Greg's name. He's preached at our church before. He also has a close relationship with Pastor Lisa Yaboa, which will be another great connection point between Southeast Raleigh Table and the Edenton Street site. Greg will be with us to preach on Christmas Eve, and he will join us officially on January 1st. Thank you, and God bless. Hi, my name is Amala Ahmad, and I am a member at Edenton Street. I've been going to Edenton Street for over 10 years now, and I've grown up going to the gathering, going to Sunday school, singing in choir, and being an active participant at youth group. Currently, I am the youth representative for church council, and this is my second year being that role. I get to attend meetings for church council, and I give the update on new and ongoing youth activities going on. And there is also the student leadership team for youth, which I'm also a part of, and we get to help come up with new and fun ideas for youth group to make it more fun. And right now youth group is completely virtual and we have changed a lot to make sure that everyone is still having fun and enjoying it and staying connected. And our Sunday night youth groups have been called Sa Sunday Night Live and we get to have leaders and students help lead games, um, sing and help pray and do call to worship. And on Wednesday nights, we have our small groups, and it's just a way to check in during the week and stay connected with our community. We have had events over the summer called Novice Classes, which is a play on master classes that leaders have led with showing their special skills and sharing it with us over Zoom calls over during the week. And we've also had a book club on world issues going on right now. Um, I would just like to say thank you for everyone's generosity and giving so that all of this could be done for our youth program and that if it weren't for you that then we wouldn't have successfully gone virtual and have fun events. We are so grateful for Amala and her energy and her joy and we're grateful for all the youth in our church. As a parent to two middle schoolers and a high schooler, I am constantly amazed and blown away by the creative ways our youth team um, continues to do ministry during this time of COVID and engage our kids in wonderful um, ways to follow Jesus. I am so grateful for our youth ministry. It's your generosity that makes our youth ministry possible, and we have so much to celebrate, so thank you. This week, be on the lookout. Uh, we will be putting out a video that is telling about all the great things that are happening in our church um, this year and the year to come, but the best part of that video is you're actually gonna get to see and meet on that video our new senior pastor, uh, Reverend Greg Moore. I, for one, am beyond thrilled that he's going to be be our new senior pastor. On a scale of 1 to 100, I'm about 112 with so much excitement. He is someone that I have known only from afar and admired for years, and I'm so excited that he'll be our senior pastor at Edenton Street. So be on the lookout for that video coming up this week. And now as we continue to worship, please give generously unto God our tithes and our offerings. This week, we're finishing up our sermon series, Digging Deep, and today it's Digging Deep, My Flesh Will Live in Hope, Living in Hope. So we're going to be reading Psalm 16. Hear now God's word for you, a word of encouragement today. 
Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. May God add God's blessing to our hearing of God's word. Let's pray. Oh God, as we come to your word this morning, we ask that you will teach us and bless us and encourage us. Show us your truth, show us yourself. Build us up in our faith. We are yours and we are listening. Amen. In 1994, there was a classic movie that came out starring Jim Carrey. It was called Dumb and Dumber. And the title of the movie basically tells you everything you need to know about that movie. But there's this funny scene where the goofy, goofy Jim Carrey, whose name is Lloyd Christmas, okay, he's got this gap in his front teeth. He's got these really short, just dorky bangs all the way across. And he's talking to this gorgeous redhead that he's in love with. Her name is Mary. And, and Lloyd has traveled across the country to try and win Mary's heart. And so Lloyd says to Mary, what do you think the chances are of us ending up together? And Mary says, well, Lloyd, that's difficult to say. We don't really, and Lloyd interrupts her, hit me with it. Just give it to me straight. I came a long way to see you, Mary. You can level with me. What are my chances? Not good. Carrie says, you mean not good like one out of a hundred? And Mary says, I'd say more like one out of a million. And there's this long pause. And then Lloyd says, so you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! It's so ridiculous. Lloyd has this confidence. We don't know where it comes from. It is blind. It is ridiculous. It is out of touch with reality. Woody Allen, another movie icon, says this. Confidence is what you have before you understand the problem. Well, you and I, we'd, had, we'd have to have our heads buried deep in the sand in 2020 to not understand the problem or the problems as the case may be. COVID, racial injustice, the political dumpster fire we called a debate on Tuesday night that I'm still worked up from, physical separation from our loved ones, nothing is as it should be. If you're confident in the midst of all of this crazy, we could argue you're just not paying attention. And into this reality in which we're living, Psalm 16 calls us to put our confidence in God. Yes, even in 2020, even at a time when it feels like we're unraveling, the psalmist has confidence because and only because he knows he belongs to the Lord. There's something about this confidence in God that gives the psalmist peace and security in his body. Verse nine of this psalm leaps off the page to me. It says this, moreover, my flesh will live in hope. Other translations say, my body will rest secure. Why does that continuously leap off the page all week as I've studied the scripture? I think it's because my body, my actual physical body, is holding so much tension and stress right now. 
My body feels anything but secure, anything like it's living in hope. All of our bodies, I think, feel vulnerable right now because of COVID, because of the collective anxiety we're living in. You know, you know you have tension when you wake up in the morning and your jaw is tired. You know, I think some of us are like clenching our jaws and grinding our teeth at night and we're not even aware till we wake up and we're just achy the beginning of the day. Well, I want my body to live in hope, but that's not how it feels like life is for me right now. Psalm 16 calls us to have confidence, not in what's swirling around us in the world and not even confidence in ourselves, not in our newsreels, not in the stock market projections, but confidence in God. And this confidence is more than a spiritual thing. It actually helps us live settled securely in our bodies, that we might live day to day in hope and in peace. On Sunday night, I was with six women, my book club, and we were socially distanced, spread out. My friend has this great big porch in her backyard. And we were talking about parenting during the pandemic. And one of the women, her child's school had put together a webinar, a Zoom, and there was a psychologist that was presenting on parenting during the pandemic, an expert. And she was talking about anxiety. And she asked everyone on the Zoom, she said, what is the opposite of anxiety? And so I'm asking you, what do you think the opposite of anxiety is? Well, when my friend asked that at book club, immediately I thought, okay, the opposite of anxiety, peace, calm. But the expert, the psychologist psychologist said, no, it's not peace and it's not calm. The opposite of anxiety is trust. Psalm 16 is a picture of what it looks like to place your trust in God. Verse 8 of Psalm 16 says, I put the Lord always before me. We choose to put our trust in God again and again, every day, even every hour, every time we read another anxiety-provoking headline or tweet, The next time the ding on the email comes in and it has us start ricocheting and anxiety and uncertainty, we put the Lord before us again and again and we say, God, I am not confident in anything that is happening around me, but I choose to put my trust in you. As I was thinking about putting trust in God, I realized there's actually a prerequisite even to trust. There's a step before trust, and it's hope. We put our hope in God, and then like jello congealing into something solid, that hope firms up to become trust. So if it starts with hope, we've got to be honest and name that these days, hope is wearing thin. We wouldn't necessarily tell anyone else this, but each of us have areas in our own lives where we are just about to give up hoping if we haven't already just resigned ourselves to the way things are. On Wednesday, September 23rd, the night that the news, the indictment, and Breonna Taylor's court case came in, I watched an Instagram Live with Austin Channing Brown. She's a black woman, an author, an activist, In her 2018 book titled, I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness is a bestseller and really, really challenging to read. Austin Channing Brown was holding space for people to lament what had happened. And she really surprised me because she quoted scripture and she referenced Abraham how God had told Abraham and Sarai that they'd have children in their old age, but time marched on and they still hadn't had those children and it would have made sense for them to not believe what God had said. But Austin Channing Brown quoted Romans 4, 18, which says this, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed that God had power to do what God had promised. Austin Channing Brown talked about how this kind of hope that Abraham had, this hope against hope, 
It's for when your back is up against the wall. In different ways, some of us have our backs up against the wall right now. Your disease shows no signs of lessening. Your back is against the wall. You long for a companion, for a spouse. You've been praying for years. Your back is up against the wall. You're unemployed and you're not sure you can face one more internet application that goes into internet void. You're not sure you can continue to pay your mortgage. Your back is against the wall. You see your child in pain and there's nothing you can do to help. Your back is against the wall. Some of your marriages, you're dealing with infidelity. Your back is against the wall. Some of you are struggling with infertility and your back is against the wall. As much as we try to curate our lives and control them, there is really no guarantee that things will go the way we hope in life. We know that we can't necessarily even put our hope in places we thought we could. We can't necessarily put our hope in our justice system, in our electoral system, or even in the goodness of others. Putting our confidence in God is the way we say, God, my back is against the wall, but I will choose to put you before me and to put my trust in you. And I know I'll be secure in you, God, even if all the things I hope and pray for don't happen. I'll remain secure in you no matter what. It's kind of like, I love that reference, that prayer in scripture, I believe, help my unbelief. We say to God, I hope in you, help me to hope in you. Hope happens when our feet hit the floor in the morning. We ask God to guide us that day and to lead us in a way of love. Sometimes God wants us to hope with our feet. Sometimes God wants us to hope with our hands, with our checkbooks, with our ballots, with our note cards, pens, and stamps as we encourage and bless and reach out to others in love. Hope is defined as the joyful anticipation of good. Without God, we'd be naive or idiotic to anticipate good right now. When all signs point the other direction, without God, we'd be dumb and dumber like Lloyd to anticipate good. But hoping in God is different because we are putting the Lord before us and we are putting our hope in the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. This God who is still alive and still in the world and at work even today. And that hope, it turns to trust and that trust becomes a confident bedrock in our lives. I really like how Psalm 16 ends. Putting our trust in God, putting the Lord always before us, it has a beautiful result, the psalm says. It's joy. Verse 11 says, Oh God, you show us the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. The life with God, that is the joy. It's not just getting what we want out of life. Rather, it's resting securely in God that brings joy. I know this is true because some of the people I've known who have suffered the greatest in life but walked with God, they demonstrate a joy greater than so many other people I know. And the way they wear that joy, it doesn't look like a consolation prize. There is something about this life with God that brings real and deep and abiding joy. And so this week, here's the homework. Put the Lord before you every morning. Every morning this week, say to God, I belong to you and my back might be against the wall in all these ways, oh God, but I put you before me and I put my hope and I put my trust and I put my confidence in you, oh God. When we put the Lord before us each day and throughout the day, we live in God and our bodies can live in hope. In the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Sign me up for that. Or as Lloyd would say, yeah.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
This week, every day, often say to God, I put you before me. I put my hope in you. My body will rest secure. My flesh will live in hope. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace this day and forevermore. Amen.